Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Praise and gratitude let us pray to Allah Subhanahu wa taala who has given blessings to us all. Now forgetting the prayers and greetings to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family and companions. May we all seek his intercession and receive guidance until the day of judgment. Amin. The honorable lecturer Mr. Dr. Kaharudin SIPMHUM. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Wafia Ashiwa Fadilah, a student majoring in English Education, Faculty of Tarbiyah and Teacher Training at the State Islamic University of Alauddin Makassar. About this video, this video is intended to final assignment in the phonetics and phonology course, and then in this video, we will discuss about the 10 answers of the questions. The structure of the video, namely first, is the introduction, then the discussions of the answer of the 10 questions, and at the end of the video is a conclusion in the form of reviews, recommendations, and also thanks. So let's move to the first question. What do you know of language, phonetics, and phonology? Describe their relationship. First, language. Language is a communication tool. Of, or we can say like language is one of communication tool used by humans to communicate, to convey message from thoughts and feelings which are formed from conventional elements such as words, sounds, phrases, sentences, and meanings. And on the other hand, phonetics is the study of human speech organs, speech sounds, and also speech production. Phonology itself basically studies about speech sounds from a cognitive perspective or it can say it's like phonology lead us to study about speech sounds and how the human mind works into two fundamental aspects namely first to organize and also use speech sounds in a language next the relationship among language, um, phonetics, and also phonology is very close. We can see it in terms of linguistic science, whereas we know that linguistics is the study about language, such as phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. So the elements of language itself include phonetics and phonology. The two disciplines are very close to each other because it is very impossible to understand phonology without have a knowledge about phonetics. In other words, phonetics fits phonology with data to create life in exploring sounds, relationships, and patterns in English. Next, we move to question number two. What are the functions of phonetics in teaching English pronunciation? Phonetics provides instruments to lead us to learn pronunciation effectively such as articular speech, exemplagratia, mouth, teeth, tongue, lips, and the others. Segmental sound types like vowels and consonants, suprasegmental sound types like such as stress, intonation, Injunctors. In teaching pronunciation, phonetics 
shows how to articulate the symbols used to represent each sound for English, allowing them to use the symbols included in the English dictionary to help their own pronunciation. Through learning phonetics, the learners can recognize how to pronounce symbols differently. Which one the sound is the articulated longer, which one the sound is articulated shorter, and also it makes the learner easier to pronounce words correctly. Knowledge of how to properly articulate phonetics symbols gives rise to the ability to understand and use the IPA or International Phonetics Association alphabet, which is commonly used in English dictionary and also the English books. This center certainly makes uh, the learners more easier to read this transcription provided and helps them to avoid confusion with similar sounds of their first language. So it's very helpful to make our not confused with the similar sounds of our first language and helps us to produce different English sounds and it does impact the increasing the confidence of us when we're trying to speak English. That is the reason why phonetics is very important for learning and teaching English pronunciation as a Persian language in Indonesia. That is why phonetics has become a very important tool for the learner in learning and teaching English for a Persian language in Indonesia. In addition to learning to articulate speech sounds correctly, another important thing is often overlooked in learning and teaching English is the suprasegmental aspect, namely stress and intonation. Because our um, we are as students and also maybe the teachers often forget that stress and intonation carry meaning and indicate the speaker's feelings and emotions. So when Indonesian learning English at the first as a foreign language, they uh, they plan Indonesian habits from Indonesian to English. We have to change these habits so we can speak and pronounce English sounds fluently. Now we move to question number three. What are the functions of phonology in Teaching English pronunciation, describe your answer. In teaching English, phonology should be used to help the learners become familiar with the items. First, sounds production by using speech organs. And there are at least two ways that can be used to draw the learners' attention of how to produce English sounds first to show the learners how to 
form English sounds correctly with using their speech organs such as mouth, nose, nose and throat. Or we can say this part is article letters. Second, to provide opportunities to the learners to practice the muscle of their speech organs by pronouncing English words related to the sound already learned. The next item is producing segmental sounds. They are consonant and vowels. After we familiar with the article letters, of course, we have to know and study in detail nature of individual sounds of English by splitting them into two categories there are consonant and vowels. The next item is producing suprasegmental sounds. There are stress, intonation, length, and also juncture. Exactly, English is not only about how to pronounce the consonant and vowel sounds correctly, but also we have to know the correctly method to place the stress, pitch, and also the intonation correctly. The next and the last item is producing connected sounds or assimilation and elision. The learners not only need to know the types of sounds how to produce the sounds in correctly way but also need to know how the sounds are connected and change in their usage for communication because they are useful to develop the learner's pronunciation skills and comprehension by knowing the characteristics based on the phonology above, Indonesian English learners is expected to be able to see their mistakes in pronouncing English words because mistakes in English words pronunciation not only lead to poor English of the learners but also lead to deep learners next we move to question number four what are contrastive and non-contrastive sounds in phonology describe your answers and give examples sound patterns there are contrastive and non-contrastive sounds Contrastive sounds refer to the pattern of vonem organization in the pronunciation of a word, which, if one of the phonem replaced with another sound, it will produce a new word with a different sound and also the different meaning from the other sounds. So, for make it clearly, for example, the word hate, hat, is pronounced hat, hat. If the phonem t is replaced with the phonem t, a new word is hate, hat, hat will be formed which is pronounced had which is have different meaning on the other hand non-contrastive sounds refer to the pattern of organization of speech sounds in the pronunciation of speech sounds of pronunciation of a word which if one phoneme is replaced with another will result with a different pronunciation but the meaning remains the same 
for example the word tomorrow is pronounced tomorrow when the phoneme e uh, is replaced with the phoneme u it will be pronounced like tomorrow and it's not um, remains the meanings or not change the meaning just change the pronunciation and also have a different pronunciation but still have same meaning next we move to question number five Crescent A and Adams M 2013 classify phonological rules phonology rules into seven major types of phonological rules explain three of them so Curzon A and Adams M 2013 classified phonological rules into seven major with references to the phonological process involved namely assimilation dissimulation insertion deletion metathesis fortition fortition and lenition first assimilation assimilation is one of the phonological rules that explain how a certain sound changes to become more like another sound or is called assimilation in its classic phonetic environment or classist sound some linguists argue that assimilation generally occurs due to the rapid delivery of speech made by speaker when speak assimilation can take a place in a word for example the word handbag is correctly or usually pronounced handbag but in fast or in fast speech this word can go through a process of assimilation where it is often pronounced hambat hambat next dissimulation dissimulation can be understood as a phenomenon where one sound in a word is chained or dissimilatory change or omitted dissimilatory omission which consequently makes the pronunciation of the word different for example for example of omission dissimulation can be seen in the word governor which is the word pronunciation is governor surprise which is the correct one is surprise surprise and particular which is the one uh, the correct one is particular next is fortition or strengthening fortition is one of phonological rules that shows of phenomenon of changing a consonant sound from a weak consonant sound to a strong consonant sound producing a strong consonant requires stronger degree of muscular effort and breath first this kind of strengthening consonant sound is called for this consonant for example is a speaker changing a fricative sound f fa into a full stop sound fa. for example when they pronounce the word have 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 by which the fricative sound va is changed into a stop sound pa that the word 
is pronounced hype. All right, next we move to question number six. What do you know of place of articulation? Explain your answer and give examples as well. Place of articulation may be understood as a specific location in the mouth in which two speech organs work together in producing consonant sound. There are six speech organs used to make uh, consonant sounds. First, the lips, the teeth, the alveolar ridge, the heart palate, the soft palate or velum, and the four and four parts of the tongue, namely the tip, the blade, the body, and the root. In terms of place of articulation, consonant sound in American English can be classified into nine sounds which which could be easily be remembered by using the following acronyms Bila dapat pavegola. First, B for bilabial sounds. The sounds are pa, ba, ma. These consonant sounds are produced by patting the two lips, upper lip and the lower lips together, as in sound pa, for example, in word pe, sound ba, for example, in sound in word by, and sound ma for example in the word maybe next labiodental sounds la for labiodental sounds the sounds are fa and va these consonant sounds are produced by contacting the lower lips with the upper teeth as in sound fa in the word fifth and also the sound va, for example, in the word five. Next, D for dental sound. Dental sounds are th and the. These consonant sounds are made when tongue tip for sound th or, or tongue blade for sound the contacts upper teeth for example for sound the in the word thursday and the sound the for example in the word this next a for alveolar sounds alveolar sounds such as ta the na o sa and z these consonant sounds are made when the tongue tip contacts the alveolar ridge as the sound ta in the word tie, sound da in the word day, sound na in the word night, or sound all in the word lie. Our tongue blade contacts the alveolar ridge as sound sa in the word sight and the sound or sound za as in the word zoo. Next, pat for palatal sounds. Palatal sounds such as chip, ch, and y. Palatal sounds are produced when the blade of the tongue touch the hard palate touch the hard palate assembly gracia sound j in the word judge sound ch in the word chill and sound ya in the word young next pa for palato alveolar sounds they are sh j and r these consonant sounds are produced when the tip the blade of the tongue approaches or touches the alveolar ridge 
and the main body of the tongue approach the hard palate. In the mouth, example gracia sound shall, sh, as in the word ship, and the sound j, as in the word casual, and the sound r, as in the word remember. Next, v. This is for velar sounds. Velar sounds are ka. G and N. These consonant sounds are produced when the back of the tongue touch the soft palate or velum, as sound ka in the word cup, as sound g in the word girl, as sound n in the word sing. Next, glow. Glo is for glottal sound. Glottal sound is <sighs> This consonant sound is produced when the flow of air is stopped by the glottis with same construction of the glottis closing and then released example gratia the sound ha as in the word how. The last La for labiovelar sound. Labiovelar sound is wa. This consonant sound is produced when the big part of the tongue touch or contacts the soft palate and lips also come close to each other. Example gracia sound wa in the word world. What? All right, we move to the next question. Question number seven. What do you know of manner of articulations? Explain your answer and give examples as well. Manner of articulation. Manner of articulation describes two things. First, how the different organ, uh, the different organs of speech interact to one another. In producing consonant sounds. Scone is how the airflow is obstructed to affect the production of consonant sounds quality. Manner of articulation gives basic distinctions of how consonant sounds are made through seven concepts of manner of articulation. They are stops, fricatives, affricatives, nasals, laterals, and also approximant. The six manner of articulation are easily remembered by using the acronyms of the six manner of articulation. The acronyms is STOFA NASLA. So first, Stall for stop or plosives. In this manner of articulation, consonant sounds are produced by closing the speech organs, both oral and nasal cavity, that the eye strain is blocked. The English consonant sounds produced with this manner, there are the sound pa as in the word pay, Ta as in the word tai, ka as in the word k, ba as in the word bright, da as in the word do, and sound ga as in the word great. Next, the sound f, the acronyms f to Fricatives sounds. Fricatives, this manner of articulation, produces consonant sounds by blocking the air stream in the mouth, but not making complete closure. It means the air moves through.
through the mouth and produces audible friction. Example Gracia, the sound as as in the word cell, the sound za as in the word zoo, zoo, the sound fa as in the word fairy, the sound va as in the word very, the sound tha as in the word Thursday, the sound the as in the word then, then, the sound sh as in the word ship, the sound j as in the word pleasure, pleasure, the sound ha as in the word hut. Next, A for affricatives. Affricatives. This manner of articulation produces consonant sounds by blocking the air stream briefly with the tongue in the mouth. But in contrast to stop, the blocked air stream is suddenly not released, but is slowly released and causes an audible friction sound. For example, Gracia, sound ch in the word chew or check sound jib for example the sound jib in the word join jump next nas for nasals this manner of articulation produces consonant sounds by blocking the air stream pass through the oral cavity using the vellum and the back of the tongue so that the air can only pass through the nasal cavity. For example, Gracia, the sound ma, as in the word mom, maybe, and the sound na, as in the word night, and the, word, uh, the sound n, as in the word sing. Next, l for lateral laterals or liquid this manner of articulation is produced consonant sounds by contacting by contacting the tip of the tongue onto the alveolar ridge so that the air passes through both sides of the tongue example gracia the sounds all as in the word lip last is a for approximants or glides this manner of articulation produces consonant sounds by making the articulators interact example gracia example gracia the tongue and the alveolar ridge without actually touching in English, there are three approximate sound. Uh, for example, the sound ya in the word you, the sound wa in the word wife, the sound r in the word rice. Next, we move to question number eight. Describe what you understand from the following chart from the chart we see that the there are a tongue elevation what is tongue elevation in phonetics the tongue also plays a decisive shift role in influencing the quality of vowel sounds that we make by altering its position in our mouth the position of the tongue in our mouth can be described in three part or it calls three vertical positions in terms like high mid and low for example for the high position it will be produced sound 
the vowel sound E, for example, as in the word B, and the other hand when the tongue position is low, it will produce different vowel sound as for sound I, as in the word tribe. And also, if the tongue is placed about halfway between high and low, it's called mid position, like in the sound U, uh, as in the word dress. So, from this way, we know that the high the mid or the low position of the tongue, it will be produced different sound or different vowel sound. Next, in the chart, we see the closeness of the mouth. There is show the openness of the mouth until it openness of the mouth. For example, when it close, eh, as in the sound, uh, vowel sound E. For example, as in the word B. For near close, the sound is E. For example, as in the word bit. Next is close mid. The sound is A. For example, as in the word bait. Next, mid. Such as in the sound U. Uh, such as in the word sova. Next, open mid. The sound produced is a. So we, our mouth is open mid, a. Such as in the word red. Next is near open. So it's closely to open, near open. The sound produced is I. So our mouth is near open, I. As in the word but, but, but is not full openness of the mouth. And the next is open. For example, the sound ah. So our mouth is open, ah. As in the word palm so our mouth is completely open ah so the step is like the close until it opens from the sound ah for example as in the word palm from the chart we also see the position of the tongue elevation when discussing the position of the tongue elevation, it will refer to where this elevation takes place on the three horizontal positions. They are front, central, and back. For example, for the position of front vowel is the sound E, the position of our tongue horizontally, is by positioning the front of the tongue in the direction of the hard palate. Therefore, this sound is called front vowel. And for example, for position of the tongue is the back position. The vowel sound A, for example, as in the word palm. We can feel that when we produce this sound, this vowel sound, is we produce it by raising the back of the tongue in the direction in the direction of the soft palate. Therefore, it is called as back vowel. And next, for example, is central vowel. Central vowel. It means we placing our tongue in the central position that is mean the tongue is the position halfway between the front vowel and the back vowel the example is the sound a for 
uh, example as in the word nose. From this chart, we also see the shapes of our lips. It is rounded or unrounded because it is makes like different sounds. As a rounded vowel is made, a speakers will make a opening and circular mouth. For example, the sound U when making our lips U as in the word loose. And on the other hand, unrounded vowels are made with the lips in the relaxed position. For example, the sound E in the word B. So our mouth is not rounded but is unrounded because it's spread B. This chart or this picture is clearly represent the picture of the sounds is represented the oral cavity diagram in the form of quadrilateral to clearly see the manner of articulating the English vowel sounds and in charting vowel sounds linguists commonly use three components or three parameters there are first tongue elevations a kind position of tongue elevation and lip shapes they don't specifically include openness of the mouth because it has something to do with the tongue elevation next we move to question number nine Describe the following terms concerning suprasegmental sound. First, stress, syllable, and word stress. Stress is defined as an emphasis in the form of loudness given to certain syllables in English words or phrases. Stress, stress syllable, stress syllable commonly heard strong, loud, and long. In contrast, unstressed syllables are weak, soft, and short. Also, some linguists call stress as an accent. So how we can indicate the stress? We can also know the stress um, with the apostrophe or the symbol given in front of syllable which means that the syllable will be uh, articulated longer or louder than the other syllable talk about syllable what is syllable syllable is a unit of pronunciation for words which is typically made up of one vowel sound with or without surrounding consonants for example the word what how many syllable in this word so we know that there are two syllable in this word water in a word there are maybe can include one syllable two syllables for example one syllable in word called two syllable in word doctor three syllable in word however four syllables in word traditional five syllables in word determination and also six syllables as in the word autobiography next word stress what is word stress word stress is certain and pass is given to a unit of pronunciation or it's called a syllable in individual words not in presses or sentences as an individual item of a press or a sentence each word has its own stress which is put 
a, a syllable in the word. In English, it is usually short words. Just have one stress. For example, as in the word sample, sample, there are two syllables, but the word stress is placed on the first syllable, sample, sample, sample. In word stress, there are a primary stress, secondary stress, and also unstressed. So, primary stress is the strongest, strongest stress, which is a given to a syllable in a word. And in the other hand, secondary stress is also a weaker and passive stress in a word. And also given into another syllable in a word. Last is unstressed is the weakest emphasis, which is given to uh, syllables in a word. Next, we move to intonation, pitch, and also tone. What is intonation? Intonation is known as intonation is known as the other type of supersegmental sound, which is found in English. As for linguists, it's commonly defined as a rising or falling pitch, or pitch change over a group of words. But it used to distinguish different types of sentences, such as statements, which one is questions, which one is commands, requires, request, or another. Indonesian have two basic patterns of height of voice. In speech, there are high pitch or rising voice or low pitch falling voice or low pitch falling voice in other hands what is pitch pitch is recognized as a uh, the voice pattern of intonation or it can be said tone tends to show how something is being said it is more like an attitude rather than being a voiced pattern. In our social interaction, we also meet someone like speaking happily or someone like speaking angry. So therefore, the sound of mood there are is called tone. So we know that tone is more describe the moods of the speakers like it is happily or it is angrily therefore tone is also known as a part of pragmatic communication which is used to show speakers emotion by using different tones the words in a sentence can have another meanings aside from a real original meaning of two words. The last is juncture. What is juncture? So, when we recognizing clear-cut border lines between words in connected speech, which is known as juncture, in connected speech, it is important to know which segment of a phrase functions to keep a terms a part of the sake of conveying a clear meaning in oral communications with our interlocutors juncture is very important because when we speak we often like we don't know where or when to pause when we are saying some segments of the utterance. For example, the sentence ice cream and I scream. It is very different meaning ice cream and I scream. 
ice cream, it means you eat the ice cream. But I scream, you scream loudly or you scream to express your emotion. It's quickly different. It's very different. So juncture is very important to us to know where to place the juncture in correct place. Science placing the juncture in incorrect place can potentially cause a perspectual difference and misunderstanding. It is therefore strongly advised to the Indonesian learners to more learn about gender by using payers. Next, we move to the last question, question number 10. How many consonants and vowel sounds can you find in the following words? Identify the sounds and what are the names of the sounds in phonetics. For example, the word please, please, it is pronounced please. It consists of three consonant sounds. They are voiceless bilabial stop sound pa, voiced alveolar lateral o, voiced alveolar lateral o, and voiced alveolar vricative z, and also one vowel sound that is tense, high front, and rounded vowel e. The words there are first pepper. It is pronounced pepper. It is pronounced pepper. Has a primary stress at the beginning of this word. Primary stress is the strongest emphasis, which is given to a syllable in a word. It is also has three consonant sounds. Two sound which are voiceless bilabial stop sound and a voiced palato alveolar approximate sound R and two vowels first open mid front and rounded vocal or the sound is E Second, mid central vocal u. Next, the word is brother. It is pronounced brother. Brother has the main stress at the beginning of this word. The main stress is the strongest emphasis placed on a syllable in a word. This word has four consonant sounds. They are first, first voiced bilabial stop sound ba, second voiced palato, alveolar approximate sound r, next voiced dental fricative sound th, and two vowel sounds. Open mid back and rounded vowel a uh, and mid central vowel u. Uh. Next, number three, the word straight. It is pronounced straight. This word has three. This word has three consonants. First, voiceless alveolar fricative sound sa. Two voiceless alveolar stop sound ta voiced palato alveolar approximate sound r and two vowel sounds close mid front and rounded vowel e near close front and rounded vowel e. Next word, the word number four is dream. Dream. 
It is pronounced dream. This word has three consonant sounds. First, voiced alveolar stop sound da. Voiced palato alveolar approximant sound r. Voiced bilabial nasal sound ma. And one vowel sound. It is plus front close front and rounded vowel e next word is the fifth word or the word number five arrive it is pronounced arrive this word has a main stress this word has the main stress on the rav syllable or the second syllable in this word. This word has two consonant sounds. First, voiced palato alveolar approximant sound R. Second, voiced labiodental fricative sound V. And this word has three vowel sounds. Mid central vowel a second open front and rounded vowel a and the third near close front and rounded vowel e the next word is the word number six crash it is pronounced crash crash this word has three consonants. First, voiceless, velar stop sound ka. Second, voiced palato alveolar approximate sound r. The third, voiceless palato alveolar fricative sound sh. And one vowel sound near open front and rounded vowel i now we move to the next word the word number seven theme it is pronounced theme this word this word has two consonants first voiceless dental fricative sound th second voiced bilabial nasal sound ma and has one vowel sound namely close front and rounded vowel e now we move to another word the word number eight general it is pronounced general has uh, this word has the main stress at the beginning of this word or it calls primary stress. Primary stress is the strongest emphasis which is given to a syllable in a word. This word has four consonant sounds. First, voiceless palatal, a fricative sound, jip. Next, voiced, alveolar nasal sound, na. Next, voiced palato alveolar, approximate sound R. And last, voiced alveolar lateral sound LA. In this word also has three vowel sounds. First, open mid front and rounded vowel A. Second, there are two mid central vowel u next we move to the last word or the word number nine salary it is pronounced salary this word has the main stress or the primary stress at the beginning of this word the main stress is the strongest emphasis placed on a syllable in a word. This word has 
three consonant sounds. First, voiceless alveolar fricative sound S. Second, voiced alveolar lateral sound L. Next, voiced alato alveolar approximate sound R. This sound also has three vowel sounds. First, near open front and rounded vowel I. Second, mid central vowel sound U. And the last, close front and rounded vowel E. So we move to the last part of this video is closing. I want to review the important things of what I described before. So the relationship among the language phonetics phonology is very close. We can see it in terms of linguistics science, where as we know that linguistics is the study about language and the elements of language such as phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and also pragmatics. There are several important functions of phonetics in teaching English pronunciation. Through learning phonetics, learners will be able to recognize how to pronounce symbol differently with the other symbol, which is make something more easier for them to pronounce words correctly. This is one of the functions of the phonetics and it's related to phonology. Phonology should be used to help the learners become familiar with the following items such as first sound production using speech organs, producing segmental sounds such as vowels and consonant sounds, how to producing segmental sounds, suprasegmental sounds such as stress, intonation, juncture, and also producing sounds connected such as assimilation and elision. Phonology discuss about how sounds function in language. In phonology also discuss about sound patterns, organization of speech sounds, provides of overview of the pattern of the phoneme organization in the language pronunciation system. Phonemes have at least two patterns, namely contrastive and non-contrastive sound. On the other hand, Curzon A and Adams M, 2013, classify phonological rules into seven major, namely first, assimilation, next, dissimilation, insertion, deletion, deletion, metathesis, partition, and lenition. In understanding phonetics, it is also very important to understand the place and manner of articulation to help us to produce consonant sounds in English very well. Likewise, in producing vowel sounds, we must have an understanding of the place and manner of articulation as well as the characteristic of English vowels. And it is important to understand the chart that represent how vowel sounds are produced. Lastly, regarding suprasegmental sound, it is very important to understand all the elements of suprasegmental sounds. They are stress, syllable, word stress, intonation, tone, pitch, and also juncture. And also, it's very important to keep practice the ability to know the number of consonant sounds and the number of vowel sounds or the technical names of them 
to be able to recognize their name. Um, there are the name, the technical name of vowel sounds and the technical name of consonant sounds. It's very important for us to learn it more by practicing to recognizing which one and how many um, consonant sounds in a word or how many vowel sounds in a word. Next, I'm highly recommend to teachers and learners of English to keep learn about linguistics, about phonetics and phonology by searching a lot of knowledge through books or through online sources. However, I personally recommend a book called English Phonetics for Indonesian learners of English written by Dr. Kaharuddin SIP MHUM and Dr. Juwairia Ahmad MPD MTSOL. Well, that's all from me. Lastly, I personally would like to thank the lecturer of the phonetics and phonology course, Mr. Dr. Kaharuddin SIP MHUM and those who have helped me a lot in making this video. Thank you and sorry if there is an error in this video. To close this video, let's say Alhamdulillah together. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.